done yet. So you've opened up your knit kit and let's get started. We're going to be working through the pattern and I'll take you through the different parts of it. You have a ball of yarn in each of the different colors of the color palette you've chosen along with two skeins of Cargo Blues Merino DK in the contrast color. The size of the blanket is approximately 75 centimeters wide and 90 centimeters long when it's worked on a gauge of 22 stitches and 40 rows to 10 by 10 centimeters in stocking stitch. The gauge is not incredibly important, so if your gauge is a little different but you're happy with the, the texture of the knit, then go ahead, it might just change the final size of your blanket. So, you'll see some abbreviations here and we'll talk about them as we get to them. And I am going to start at the beginning. We are going to begin at the bottom edge here with the main color in Merino DK for the cast on. There are two ways that you can do this. One option is a provisional cast on, which will give you live stitches when you come to work the edging uh, once the blanket is finished. The other option is to do a regular cast on and when you're working around for your edging, just pick up the stitches along the cast on edge. So to work the provisional cast on, you need some waist yarn and a crochet hook, your knitting needles and the yarn you're going to be knitting with. Start with a slip knot. There are different ways of doing that. Um, same slip knot you would use for your knitting. Have the tail end underneath and the working yarn crossed over. Lift up the knot and pull the working yarn through and pull it tight on the tail. Slip this onto your crochet hook and you can work a couple of chains so that you've got an end over here. Then take your knitting needles and you're going to work the stitches onto the one side. So the working yarn comes to the right if you are right-handed and put the crochet hook on top of the knitting needle. Then take the yarn around and wrap it clockwise around the hook, pull the loop through the stitch and pull it firm and there's the first stitch on your needle. Let's do that again. I rest the knitting needle on my left forefinger and put the crochet hook on top and hold them with my thumb. Then take the working yarn, put it behind the needle and behind the hook and wrap it clockwise. Then bring it back and hook it through the loop. Two stitches on your needles. Let's keep going. Needle on my left hand, crochet hook on top, working yarn behind, wrap it around the hook. Keep some tension on the yarn so that you can pull it through. And each time you create one stitch on the needle and keep a loop on the hook. Cast a couple of chains so that I'm not right on top of the needle and then break the waist yarn and pull it through. And there is my provisional cast on and I've got a little bit of yarn on each end. You can easily trim those if they bother you. The next step is to knit two rows in garter stitch. So using the main color, the Merino DK, just knit the stitches as if they were your cast on and work two rows in garter stitch. There's one row done. And my second row. Now we're going to change to the contrast color. Leave the main color attached and we're going to work it up the side as we go. 
So the next six rows are the beginning of the basic pattern. On the first row, you are going to knit nine Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then slip one. And it doesn't really matter whether you slip it knit or purl wise, you'll see that it, it evens out on the next row. Now knit the next nine. And slip one. Knit the next nine and keep working that way to the end of your row. Turn your work and purl back. And as you purl back and get to the slipped stitches, you're going to keep slipping them. You've reached the slip stitch. If you keep slipping it purl wise, And continue working across the row and I'm back to the beginning. Now you don't want to leave the DK yarn behind because you're going to need it to knit it in again. So I recommend wrapping it as you go and to do that if that's my working yarn I'm going to take the DK over the working yarn so that when I knit my next stitch I've caught it in and brought it up. And you're going to work rows three, four, five, and six, just like you did for rows one and two. Once you've knit the six rows and slipped the main color all the way up, you're ready to create the bobble stitch. We're ready to knit row seven, and row seven is worked with the main color yarn. And to create the bobble stitch, you knit to the first slipped stitch. When you get to the slipped stitch, you follow the bobble instructions. So knit into the front of the stitch, but keep it on your left needle. Yarn forward as if to purl, purl into the same stitch. Yarn back as if to knit, into the same stitch. Yarn forward as if to purl, into the same stitch. Yarn back as if to knit, into the same stitch. And yarn forward to purl for the last time and pull the stitch off your needle. You now have five extra stitches on your needle. So there are six stitches here where there should be one. And you're going to cast off those extra stitches. So pull the loop over as if you were making a cast off. And you're going to do that five times for those five extra stitches. You've got one stitch left on your needle and pull the bubble tight. Push it to the front of your work and carry on and do the same again. So knit into the stitch and keep it on your left needle. Yarn forward as if to purl and purl the stitch, keeping it on your left needle. Yarn back as if to knit, yarn forward, as if to purl, yarn back, as if to knit, yarn forward, as if to purl, and take it off. And again, you've got six stitches where you should have one, because you've worked into a, a knit and a purl into that stitch three times each. So a knit purl, a knit purl, a knit purl. And you cast off those stitches 
as you would in a normal cast off. Four and five. And you're left with just the one stitch and the bobble. Pull your yarn tight, push the bobble forwards and knit to the end. The next step is to work a knit row back. So the first bubble section is complete. Now you're going to change the contrast color and the process is the same, but the placement of the bubbles is a little different. So they fit in the gaps between the previous bubbles and go through the process again. This time you're going to knit four, slip one, knit nine, slip one, and continue working to the end of the row. This time again, working with the contrast color. And remember, as you're working, as you start with the contrast color, to work over your main color yarn, and as you start each right side row, to hook it in as you go. Once you've worked your way through all of the balls of the merino twist, and finished the strap sections and got to the end of the last ball, you will knit your final row to pick up the bubbles and return in garter stitch and then work your way across to the corner so that we can begin the edging. When you get to the end of your stitches, PM refers to place marker. Now there are different types of markers that you can use for this project either will do. Um, I have got one that's a little different from the others and I'm going to use that at this corner here so that I know that that's my first corner. And having turned the corner, you are going to pick up and knit stitches along the side edge here. And in terms of how many to pick up, one stitch for every two rows. So over here, you can see, you know you did six rows of stocking stitch, which means you need to pick up three stitches along here. So I recommend picking up every second stitch and then one of the stitches from the garter stitch two rows here. Uh, I am going to be working in the round on a cable needle so I'm pulling the needle through as if I were using the magic loop so that I can rotate and get around the corner. And my marker's on the needle and I'm going to insert my needle into the first stitch and I work with my wool in my right hand, knit the stitch and I've picked it up. Then I'm gonna skip the next one and pick up the one after, skip the next one and pick up the one after. So I now have three stitches for that six row section and then I'm going to pick up one stitch from the garter rows. And I'll keep working like that along the edge. So I've got three for that section and one for my final DK. As you get to the next corner, place another marker and rotate again. I'm going to pull the needle, the cable through and I'm ready to work on my provisional cast on row. Don't worry about which end is the right end of your crochet. Um, my first stitch is actually the wrong end of the crochet to unzip. So I am going to pick up the stitches onto my left hand needle. And if you go back to where you started your crochet, you should be able to pull the last thread through the last stitch. And it should unravel quite neatly. So I don't want to lose this stitch here. Which I'm going to make sure I pick up and you can see that my crochet edge is now going to come undone quite neatly and I'm going to insert the needle into the stitch before 
I pull the loop out and insert the needle into the stitch before I pull the loop out. When you have all of the stitches on the needle, you're then ready to place a marker and rotate to knit around the corner. So I'm going to place another marker and then keep knitting along the cast on edge. I've got to my last stitch and I'm going to place a marker again and turn the corner. So again, I'm going to work down the side edge like I did before and place the last marker. And if you want to double check your pickups, you can count the number of stitches down each side and check that you have the correct number of stitches on each end. If you're one stitch different, it's not going to make a huge impact on the blanket, uh, but you can always knit two together or make an extra stitch if you want to even it out. So the last part of the pattern is to actually work the edges. The rhythm goes as follows. Knit to one stitch before the marker, make one to the right, knit one, slip your marker, knit one, make one to the left, and keep going as you work around. So here you can see I've knit to one stitch before my marker. And to make one right, you're going to lift up the bar between the stitches on your left needle and the stitches on your right and place it on your left needle. And how I remember the left versus the right is when you're making one right, you bring your left needle from the rear. So you've picked up the bar there and then you knit it from the front. So there I've created one stitch. Now I'm going to knit one, slip my marker, knit one, and to make one to the left, I'm also picking up the bar, but this time I'm going in from the front and I'll knit it from the back. And keep knitting to the next marker. I'm one stitch before the marker again. It's a make one right before the marker. So the bar is going to be lifted onto the left hand needle. Right is from the rear. And I'll knit into the loop. Knit one. Slip your marker. Knit one. Your left. Make one left. You're inserting from the front and knitting into the back and keep knitting around. So you just keep working around and around and your border edge gets wider, uh, nine more rounds, then cast off all your stitches and finish off by pulling the yarn through the final stitch. The increases at the corners creates the corner shape, which gives your blanket uh, nice pointy corners. I've now shown you everything you need to know for this project. So when in doubt, follow the pattern step by step and replay this video. Knit each color to make the blanket straps, working the bobble stitches all the way through and complete your project by working the edging for a beautiful finish. Thank you for knitting with us. Please tag us on Instagram and Facebook, post your pictures on Ravelry and let us know how it's going. Then start planning your next knit. <laughs>